Clean architecture is a popular way to organize your applications. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it, but at the end of the day, it's still a good architectural approach. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the clean architecture from scratch. When I said that we were going to set up the clean architecture from scratch, I literally meant it. We are going to start from a blank solution in Visual Studio and work our way up to the full clean architecture structure. I typically start by introducing a solution folder which is going to contain all of my projects. This is useful for splitting your actual source code from your tests. We're going to start off from the core of the clean architecture and this is the domain layer. So this layer is typically just a class library in your solution which you can call domain or you can append your project name and then domain. It depends what kind of naming convention you want to use. Let's make it a .NET 7 project and let's create it. We can get rid of this default class right away and I'm going to leave the domain project completely empty. What you will typically define in the domain project are your entities, your core business rules, factory interfaces, enumerations, value objects, custom exceptions and so on. I'm not going to be doing that right now, we are just going to focus on setting up the skeleton structure for the clean architecture. The next project that we need to introduce is the application project. Again, this is going to be a class library. I'm going to call it application and it's going to be a .NET 7 project. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Let's get rid of this default class. Now the domain layer is not allowed to reference any of the outer layers in the clean architecture but the application layer needs to have a project reference to the domain layer so I'm going to introduce that right away and let's see what we can add to our application layer. This is where you want to implement your use cases for your application. You can implement this in any way you like, you can use services, I typically use mediator for my use cases so I'm going to add the mediator nuget package so let me go ahead and install it and notice that this is the latest mediator version which actually came out just a few days ago so I'm going to install it inside of the application layer. What I also like to use in the application layer is the fluent validation package so I'm going to go ahead and install that as well. I can go ahead and install the fluent validation library directly or I can go ahead and install this one which contains the fluent validation library within it and it also contains support for dependency injection. This is useful if you want to define your dependency injection logic per your layer in the clean architecture. So let's try out that approach. I'm going to install this library here which contains the dependency injection extensions and let's see how we can introduce dependency injection into the application layer. One approach can be to create a template class that you're going to have in every layer where you want to introduce dependency injection and let's just call it dependency injection. I'm going to make this a public and static class and let's give it one static method which is going to be the add application method. I can either make it an extension method on the iService collection interface or I can have it accept the iService collection interface as an argument. Let's for example make it an extension method on the iService collection interface and what we need to put inside is the registration logic for the two libraries that we added. The first is to add mediator support and you can see that with this new version of mediator we have a new way to apply our configurations. So we have to provide an action that accepts an mediator service configuration object. So I'm going to name this argument as configuration and let's see what we have available. You can see that we have methods for adding the pipeline behaviors. What I'm interested in doing is to register services from the assembly and I'm going to pass it the current assembly. So I'm going to say type of dependency injection and we're going to use the assembly coming from this type. So let's pass that in. So this is going to take care of configuring mediator. Let's also add the validators from this assembly. This is going to wire up what's required for fluent validation. I just need to pass in an assembly instance that I already have here. So let's extract this into a variable. So I'm going to say assembly 
and we're going to do this. So let's pass it to the mediator and fluent validation methods. And of course, at the end, I need to return a services instance so that I can chain this using a fluent interface. So this roughly takes care of the application layer. We added the mediator and fluent validation libraries, and we configured our dependency injection method. The next layer in the clean architecture is the infrastructure layer. And here you want to introduce any external concerns, such as external services or maybe the database. Some people like to split the infrastructure layer into the infrastructure and persistence layers, where the persistence layer takes care of everything that is database related. You can do this if you want to, but it comes down to a personal preference. So let's keep it at one project to make it simple, which I will call infrastructure. Let's also make it a .NET 7 project. We're not going to be adding any external libraries here. Let's also introduce the dependency injection class into the infrastructure project. I'm going to copy the one from the application layer and we're going to adjust it for the infrastructure layer. I'm going to rename this to the infrastructure namespace. Let's get rid of this part here. We're going to call this method an infrastructure and we just need to add a NuGet package to expose the iService collection interface. You can do this by installing the Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection Abstractions package. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And this takes care of our infrastructure layer. Now the next layer is the presentation layer. Here again, you have two options. One approach is to have a separate project for the presentation layer. Here you're going to place your controllers or your minimal API endpoints or your Razor pages, depending what you're using for the presentation. The other approach is to just define a web API project and define all of these inside of that project as well. So I'm going to actually create a separate project for the presentation layer. Again, it's going to be a class library. I'm going to call it presentation. It's going to be a .NET 7 project. And let's introduce the dependency injection class like we did with the infrastructure project. I'm going to call it add presentation. We're going to rename the namespace and let's install the library that we need to have access to the iService collection interface. So our project is slowly starting to get some structure. And the last piece that we're missing is the actual web API project that is going to run our application. So I'm going to add an ASP.NET Core web API and let's call it web API. So now we have a little bit more options. For example, I can enable Docker support if I want to. Let's, for example, turn that on. We can use controllers or minimal APIs, depending on what we want to do. Let's go ahead with minimal APIs in this case. I'm going to enable open API support so that we have Swagger and let's create this project. The web API project is actually going to be the startup project of our solution. And let's give it a reference to all of the other projects in the solution. So presentation, infrastructure and application. You don't need to add a direct reference to the domain project because you're going to get it implicitly through the application project. And let's go to the program.cs class. Now you can see that here by default, we have a lot of boilerplate code. So let's unpack this and clean this up. I'm going to get rid of this endpoint as well. And this class here. So this is your minimal API template that you get out of the box. And let's add the registrations for all of our layers. So builder services and let's call add application and let's also call add infrastructure. And lastly, let's call add presentation. So this takes care of configuring our separate layers with dependency injection. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure that you smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Now with that out of the way, let's introduce one last component to our web API project. And this is something that you always want to set up right at the start of your project. And this is logging. And I'm going to install the Serialog ASP.NET Core library because it integrates nicely with ASP.NET Core. And it comes with file and console syncs out of the box. How you configure Serialog very quickly is by calling the host builder and you call the use Serialog method. You need to pass this method a function to apply the actual configuration with the host builder context and the logger configuration as the arguments. 
and the approach I like to use is to apply the serial log configuration from my application settings. So you can say configuration, read from the configuration of your application, and you need to pass it an iConfiguration instance by calling context and passing the configuration value. So the one thing that's missing is to specify the actual configuration in your application settings. You can replace this logging section here with something like this, which is going to apply some configuration for Serilog. I already covered this in a previous video where I talked about Serilog and structured logging in depth, so I'm not going to go over that right here. You can also go ahead and introduce HTTP request logging for your application by calling use Serilog request logging on the web application instance. So this is the high level approach to achieve a clean architecture structure with .NET 7. You have your individual layers of the clean architecture, the domain, application, infrastructure, and presentation layers, and you have one web API project that ties them all together at runtime. This is a good project structure to get started with, and you can evolve it over time as your application progresses or your architecture requirements change. You have to be aware that the clean architecture is not a silver bullet and it's not going to magically solve all of your problems. You're actually going to have to think hard about your architecture and decide if this is something that you should use in your own projects. I've personally used clean architecture on many projects in the past and it has worked out very well for me, which is why I advocate for it. But there are, of course, many alternative approaches, such as your typical N-layer architecture. And recently, one approach that has been gaining a lot of popularity is the vertical slice architecture, which I may talk about in a future video. I hope that you enjoyed this video about scaffolding a clean architecture project from scratch. Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.